my name is Dylan Chapman. I'm an artist working across writing, performance, photography, and video. My work mostly deals with notions of performance and what it means to be in front of and behind the camera. A lot of my work is really inspired by feminist video and performance art. They're often poetic gestures, like unpeeling an orange or using my body as a screen for other images to be projected onto. As a trans person, a crucial part of my work is trying to figure out where I fit within certain histories of visual culture, like trying to figure out how I fit into the matriarchal history of my own family, looking to my mother and grandmothers for inspiration, also trying to figure out how I fit into legacies of trans history, specifically as a trans woman myself, and even the complicated history of representation that queer and trans people must grapple with. Uh, maybe similar to someone like Cindy Sherman, I, I like to sort of explore um, sort of like tropes that are often associated to women. And, you know, uh, at times I also like to sort of uh, kind of poke fun at certain kind of cinematic tropes that are associated with trans people and specifically trans women in film. Um, so a lot of my work is like really about um, performing for the camera um, and uh, sort of creating an experience that uh, has multiple entry points. Um, I really try to engage both with popular culture um, and also um, more of like maybe experimental or contemporary artworks um, that, that are inspiring to me in terms of like technique or like conceptual framework. Um, but I really, uh, I want someone who maybe has no sort of conventional art training or like conventional like art historical knowledge to be able to look at my work um, and to maybe, you know, like find it funny or, or ironic or like maybe interesting, um, or, or maybe even like joyful at times. Uh, so my, my foundation really as an artist started as a photographer. We were making images without even using the camera, just using the chemical processes and different like photograms. Or sometimes I would like take something with my digital camera and I would create a negative and print it on the transparency sheet so that I was making these um, cyanotypes shooting the sort of sort of uh, negative as it were with like my like my Canon and then um, you know, creating these sort of like uh, large scale transparencies that could be used sort of as like a photogram. And so that's really like where I kind of really fell in love with the idea of being an artist. And then I was introduced to this writer who was also a photographer. His name was Hervé Guibert. And um, he was like a contemporary of Bart's. And um, he wrote a lot of things about photography, but he wasn't really writing as a theorist. He was more like taking a personal approach and talking about his relationship to image making, um, you know, as he like photographed his mother or his lovers. Um, and to me, I found that like really inspiring. And that's also sort of uh, what eventually kind of got me into thinking about writing. Um, and he has this like wonderful chapter in a book called Ghost Image about Polaroids. And he talks about how, you know, they were originally intended as like, you know, like a toy essentially. Um, 
you know, there, there's no real skill required to use like a modern Polaroid. You know, some of the earlier land cameras, you know, those, of course, you require a little bit more photo knowledge. But you know, to be able to press a button and make an image, you know, it was like really kind of um, amazing. And, and, and part of it is like in thinking about queer history, which so much of my work is steeped in, was like, it was a time where you could create intimate photographs without having to go to a lab and have them, um, you know, having the negatives developed and then produced. And so it was a, a private way for um, like queer people to develop their own visual culture. So I'm really thinking about like, what does it mean to be a subject? Um, and also what does it mean to incorporate someone else into your work, which has been um, like a, a problem I've been kind of trying to think through for most of my practice, because I, I primarily um, use my own body and my work um, because of my positionality and also because I am, <laughs> sometimes a little suspicious of representation and, and a little um, a little hesitant to use other people in my work. But as I'm like, you know, like uh, getting older and getting further in my practice, you know, I am starting to think about like uh, revisiting, looking outward, um, which I think is part of why I'm returning to photography now. A couple of months ago, I started, you know, thinking about my my frustration with um, a particular kind of photography that crops up a lot, which is often done by the like, queer male photographers, and it's just the same pictures that I've seen like back from like the nineteen twenties from people like George Platt Lines, where it's just beautiful white conventionally attractive man nude and I'm just like well, what is this doing <laughs> you know like what is this adding to a conversation and what these photographers were doing was like visualizing desire in a subversive way that they couldn't at a particular time period and and I think that that context is so different now um and I think for better or worse those kinds of images have influenced a lot of sort of complicated ideas around beauty and desire in like queer circles. And so I wanted to try to like re-photograph those images and sort of implicate myself as someone who's interested in looking at these kind of images, but from like a critical, a critical lens. Um, and I decided that I would sort of like crop in on these images and try to take these nudes and turn them into portraits. In an interesting way, I think the Polaroids are kind of pointing out like the futility of using photography to like visualize desire um, because it's about that kind of distance, right? But it, it shifts and it changes the images that I'm trying to sort of implicate myself by like radically changing the image and trying to create like, I don't know if I would say archive because I think archives are really about preservation and I'm altering things and but maybe like some kind of like funky index of like queer photography <laughs> like but yeah that's sort of where I'm at with photography right now um and it's sort of an ongoing project <laughs>